Well, we're going to continue to talk about grace today. But before I start, I want to start with a testimony uh, from a lady that sent me an email yesterday. Uh, I believe she's actually listening to the recordings of, of this uh, family series. And uh, this, is what, this is what she wrote. Um, I've, I've been uh, in leadership in women's ministry and specifically mentoring, discipling for the last eight years in my church. I am married and have three grown children and seven grandchildren. I am at this time facing a crisis in my family and my husband, prompted by the Holy Spirit, has asked me to stop ministry and to focus on our home, on myself and my relationships at home, especially our youngest son, who's 33, who is divorced and lives with us, and his two daughters come every weekend, and also to focus on my husband. Wow, exactly what, what you have been sharing as your testimony is what I'm experiencing right now. The Holy Spirit is using you and your ministry to your family and touching and convicting my heart. I have many regrets, but like you, want to humble myself under the full weight of Jesus in full submission to continue the all-surpassing power of Christ in me as He prunes and cleanses me. I have made an appointment with a former pastor Christian counselor and my husband and I have our first session this coming Tuesday, please pray that we will allow and welcome the Holy Spirit's work even to the point of pain and suffering so that full restoration in our family relationships will happen. I so want to be like Christ, full of the fruits of the Spirit. Let revival and healing begin with me and my family. In the powerful name of Jesus, and I, I was just uh, I was touched by that testimony, and I wanted to share it. But I also wanted to point out that the the trust that I hear in this testimony, that this uh, woman trusts the Lord enough to recognize the sober reality that this process can be is often painful. And that they're suffering when we come into total surrender to the Lord there's often suffering and we and we need to be okay with that we uh, you know we you know suffering doesn't sell but it's the reality of Jesus and it's the reality of Christianity and we need to be okay with that because he brings us through the suffering into victory he brings us through with his grace and it's so important to have this disposition uh, that make me like you, Lord. Make me like Jesus, no matter the cost. And I want to remind us by reading Matthew chapter 7, verses 12 through 14. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate. The Lord is giving us an invitation. When He's dealing with the issues of our heart, He's giving us an invitation of enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. In Luke 9 23 it says this and he said to all if anyone would come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me for whoever would save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it for what what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits his soul and this is the invitation that Jesus is giving to us when we talk about the, the, the new creation family. But he's not giving us this invitation without giving us 
his full grace and work in our life. So the Lord is saying, I, I, you need to die to everything. You need to die daily because it's, it's really not possible to die to everything all at once. We can, we can make a declaration. We can make a commitment. Lord, I surrender all. But then the Lord begins to show us what all means. <laughs> and so we have to die daily to all that we committed to. But he doesn't he doesn't invite us into the narrow way and say, you know, you gotta figure this out. You gotta you gotta be the tough one. You gotta be the one. He gives us his grace and his power and he says, I want you to choose me. I want you to choose I I I, I really uh was blessed by what what you shared in your prayer, uh, Jackie, because what I was hearing in your prayer is that uh, uh, here's what I what I wrote: What is more important than the Spirit of God in your life? What is more important than the Spirit of God in your life? Is it being late? Is late more important? Is human approval or disapproval more important? What is more important than the Spirit of God in our life? And the Lord wants to work this out of us. He wants us to always have His disposition, but He doesn't, He doesn't, here's what I want to point out. He doesn't say, you got you to gotta do this. He says, You've, you need to choose me and I'll do this for you. This is the grace of God. And this is, this is the, we need to be rewired uh, in much of Christianity, we're still we're still functioning in the old wiring of the old man. And I want to take us back to uh, what I commented on yesterday in the last part of the message, and that's Philippians chapter two, verse thirteen. And this is the amplified version, but I want to unpack it a little bit here again. It says, "It says not in your own strength, for it is God." who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing you and creating in you the power and desire to follow him, both to will, both in your will and to the work that you do for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. And I want to say this to confront the old man it is not up to you. It is not up to you to get this done. It is not up to you to figure it out. You know, I have a I have a prophetic bent and a spirit of discernment, and oftentimes I will see uh, the problem. I'll see what's going on and I'll see the problem. But what I've made mis- uh, the mistake I've made many times is I assume I know how to apply the solution. <laughs> Just because you see the problem doesn't mean you know the solution. And and uh, and and I believe it was um, someone else was praying about their work and about um, uh, was it Shalina? Mm-hmm. So you you were praying and saying you know the timing of the Lord. You saw the problem. You saw what was going on, and that is a true problem. But But what I'm hearing you say is that you're waiting for the grace and how to apply, how to apply the solution. And that is so important for us to recognize. See, pride says you got it. You can do this. You, you, you just need to take care of the problem. But God says, no, let me take care of this. I will guide and lead you. I will use you as a vessel to accomplish this, but it'll look very different than, than you taking care of it in your own strength and 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 you and a lot of times when we take care of it in our own strength one it doesn't change anybody's heart it, and and this is the this is what's necessary when we're working with people who are making bad decisions or we're working with our family or our children who are making poor decisions we can't change their heart by strong arming them i don't care what what age your ch- your child is you 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 can't change people's heart by strong arming them i mean i had a i had a situation in my with with one of my uh daughters when she was just i mean she was super young like two or three 
and uh, and and we were were giving her boundaries, disciplines, and nothing was working. And everything I knew, I I thought I was a great parent until uh, until I I had this this child. <laughs> I thought, man, we got it dialed in here. You know, we had three children, and they were all obedient, and 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 I mean, they weren't perfect, but but they were they were you know following all the guidelines and then and then our fourth child was born and i'm like it, it totally changed my disposition towards parents who were having uh issues with their children <laughs> and 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 i'm and i'm and i'm trying to work with with this uh with our young daughter and nothing is working i mean she's just super stubborn and and all these different things that were happening at that time and she's since changed and She's, uh, uh, but m my point is, is that I got to a place where I fell to my knees and I said, Lord, I've done everything I know to do and nothing is working. You have to help us. You have to help us. And the Lord ended up moving powerfully, like within a few days. And he did something on the inside to our little daughter who, 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 as an adult or as a as a parent there was we could not do and it changed her disposition and so we just because we see the problem doesn't mean we know how to bring the solution and and this is this is a part of trusting in the grace of god and yesterday i shared with 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 us that the grace of god is not just uh god saving us or just unmerited favor but it's it's God in everything. It's God uh, delivering us. It's God sustaining us. It's it's God leading us moment by moment. It's God uh, uh, causing us to live and breathe and have our being. It's it's God uh, giving us the strength to love our children. It's God in us loving our children. It's God in us serving our spouse. It's God in us caring for others. And, and it's God in us uh, working and enjoying the work that we do. It's God in us that's giving us our peace and our joy and our patience. The grace of God also allows us to trust in God. He actually gives us grace to trust Him. If you have a, an issue of, of not trusting the Lord or you have an issue of fear, you can look to the Lord and He'll change you. He'll change your will. He will do a work inside of you. He's the doctor. He says, get up on the table and I'll do the surgery for you. Patients do not change themselves or fix themselves or heal themselves. They lay on the table and they allow the doctor to do the surgery. And this is how it works in our life. We yield, we surrender, so here's here's a, a something that I wrote. Some may ask if 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 everything is the grace of God, then what is my responsibility to receive, to cooperate, to surrender, and allow the Lord to have His way? It sounds easy. We need to try it. We need to see how we it will re, we will wrestle with our salvation we will we will wrestle through this with fear and trembling it's like we, we we don't realize how much we trust in ourselves we don't realize how the 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 template of our life is pride we don't realize all the wiring is pride all the ways we think is pride when you begin to humble yourself you begin to see so much of what what we do is led by pride and trusting in ourselves but our part is simple. He, he, he makes it simple enough for a little child to get it. Surrender, receive, cooperate, and follow. Let me, uh, let me, let me share another um, document that I have here that I talk about the grace of God. What if grace was so powerful that it changed everything about you? And all you had to do was accept it. 
What if God really did all the work and all you have to do is let him do that work in you? What if our entire life just consisted of who we trusted in and not our efforts? What if truly believing in Jesus produced the results most try so hard in human effort to achieve? What if it was really just that simple? I think I need to read that one more time. What if grace was so powerful that it changed everything about you and all you needed to do was accept it? What if God really did all the work and all you have to do is let him do that work in you? Take a deep breath. Whew. Come on, the, the, the yoke is light. The burden is easy. Take a deep breath. It is not up to you. You're just a branch. You're just a branch. You receive everything. What if our entire life just consisted of who we trust in? Not our efforts. A branch doesn't have effort. All the effort that a branch has, it, the effort is, is the push of the vine. The, the, the branch just receives it. All the life and the effort to bear fruit, the vine is, so the branch is like, it, you know, it has sap going through it, right? So it's pushing it up. The, 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 the vine is pushing it through. It, all the work is done in Christ. All the work is done by God. We receive it and we cooperate and obey what the Lord directs us to do. But even in that obedience, it's the life of God thrusted through us to bear the fruit. God doesn't want us to try to bear his fruit. It just becomes plastic Christianity when we try to do it ourselves. It's not real. He doesn't want us to bear his fruit. He wants to he wants us to host his fruit. He wants us to to he wants I, I didn't say that correct. So bearing his fruit doesn't mean producing his fruit. So we we bear, but he produces. It's his life in us flowing through us. It is not up to you. Take a deep breath. It is not up to me. What if truly believing in Jesus produced the results most try so hard in human effort to achieve? This is true. You he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death. This is uh, Coloss Colossians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. You he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy. This is not a concept or a doctrine. You are holy, but he did it. To present you blameless, you are blameless, but he did it. And above reproach, you are above reproach, but he did it. And it's not meant to just be a concept or something that, okay, great, I'm accepted in heaven. No, this is true of you now. And the more you embrace it, the more it manifests itself in your life. You see, when we enter into the kingdom of God, we enter by faith in His grace. But we don't, it doesn't stop there. Listen to uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10. For by grace, very familiar passage, you have been saved through faith. What does this mean, this faith? It means that you're believing in someone else for your salvation, not yourself. It's not up to you to save yourself. It's not up to you to make sure you get love. It's not up to you to make sure you're safe. It's not up to you for anything. 
you put your faith in another to save you. But what is missing in the gospel today is that we need to put our faith in another for everything else. We put our faith in His grace to save us. We put our faith in His grace to sustain us, to uphold us, to give, you, give us His joy, His peace, His love, His patience, His kindness, His gentleness, His self-control. And this is not your doing, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. It is the gift of God. The gift of God is not just salvation. It's everything. It's the new life. Not a result of your works. You cannot work for this new life and you cannot sustain this new life. It's not yours. It's not yours to sustain so that no one may boast. Even when you have the disposition of Jesus, even when you're like Jesus, you can't boast and say, this is me, I made this decision, I worked for it. God did it in you. It's God's fruit, you just bear it. You just hold it out there as you cooperate with Him. It's just out there for people to see, but it's all God's fruit. It's His grace. It's the work of God. For we are His workmanship. We are His workmanship. He did this work. He is the craftsman of salvation and the one who designed us to be sustained by Him. Created in Christ Jesus, recreated for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in Him, in them. In Luke 18, 42, it says, Your faith has made you well. Your faith in Jesus, your faith in the work, your faith in the grace has made you well. You trusted in another. You trusted in God. Have we had faith? Have we made faith a difficult concept? Have we made it difficult? Have we interwoven it with self-effort? Is it not supposed to be simple, childlike trust in God? Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. We can only enter as a child, and the scripture teaches us that we must walk in in the same way we entered. Let me say that again. We must walk in the same way we entered. Look at uh, uh, Colossians 2.6. It says this, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. As you received Him, so walk in Him. And that means a lot of things. Like, not just what I'm sharing. I mean, we could unpack that for quite some time. But the part I want to point out is that as we received Him as a little child, as we received Him in humility, as we put our trust in Him to save us, to cleanse us, to deliver us, to make us holy, to make us blameless, to make us fit for heaven, for eternity, to receive eternal life, as we have received all of that as an unmerited gift that we didn't earn or deserve, we live in that same disposition as believers. This same life that we have not earned or deserved lives through us and we cooperate. There's so much freedom in this. We must embrace being like a little child who trusts in their daddy. And your faith will move mountains because your faith is in the mountain mover. So often we have faith, so often we will have faith in faith, or faith in self, or faith in my prayers, or faith in others, faith in the world, faith in our self-effort. But that's not, that's not the right faith. That is misappropriated faith misdirected. If we have faith in the mountain mover, he will move mountains. 
on our behalf. Grace is God's work and God at work. Grace is the nature and character of God active towards us. What grace does is so close to who God is, we can replace it with God. For by God you've been saved, for by grace you've been saved. It's Him. So uh, let me just uh, share a few more things before we close. Grace is favor. So unmerited favor, right? Favor. Let me unpack favor for a minute. The powerful, benevolent work of God towards us, which saved us when we were dead in our sins, cleansed us from all evil, recreated us, in his likeness, transplanted us into the kingdom of God, seated us in heavenly places, and empowered us with his complete nature in the Holy Spirit to stop sinning, follow him, and live victorious. (laughs) This is so good. Wow. So, so, So the grace of God, let me just read that last part one more time the grace of God empowers us with his complete nature it causes us to stop sinning to follow him and to live victorious grace is the word in which God uses to express his nature coming upon and into the human being Grace is the vehicle in which God uses to describe how he saves us, but it is his person, his hand, his very blood that saves and transforms us, which he calls his grace. Grace doesn't give salvation without transformation. God doesn't save sinners so they can keep sinning. He saves them as sinners, erases their sin from existence, and transforms them into holy people saints this is the work of his grace his salvation his work his very blood grace is not just a work of power though grace is very powerful it is the same power that raised jesus from the dead grace is the nature of god it works a work in a person so that so that person only wants to do what god wants to do Grace changes our will, desire, and behavior to be just like Jesus. Grace transforms us into a perfect person without flaw, without sin, and worldly desires. Where grace is invited to come in, it makes everything into the nature of God. Where grace is invited to come in, it makes everything into the nature of God. God doesn't manage sin, He conquers it. Thus, those who are impacted by the work of grace don't manage sin either. They overcome it. Father, I just pray that we would invite your grace to come inside of us and have your way. We would invite you to have your way so that we would stop managing sin and you would conquer it and destroy it and you would make us perfect and mature, lacking nothing. Lord, we invite you in to make us the parents that you, to make us like you to make us a parent like you, to make us a spouse like you, to make us us a person like you, so that we would not only be good parents and a good husband or wife, but that we would be a, a good discipler of those that we love and care for, that we would be a good friend, that we would, that we would be a good mentor and a coach, and as was shared earlier, a, a good evangelist and a, and a good leader in ministry and a, and a powerful intercessor. Lord, we invite your grace into our life to conquer everything that binds us, to destroy everything that inhibits us and to make us clean and holy and transformed, Lord, into your image and likeness. Lord, we want more than the promise of heaven. We want heaven inside of us today. We want to live out heaven for for a witness of who you are, Father. And so I pray that we would open our hearts, that we would trust you, and that we'd be okay with the pain and suffering because we know that the glory far surpasses 
our pain and suffering. And what you want to do inside of us far surpasses all the trials and the difficulties and the issues that are painful. That this narrow road actually leads to a plateau of grace where we can run and, 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 and jump and enjoy the Lord as a, as a little child. This narrow road, this narrow gate actually opens up into a plateau of grace when we accept you, when we die daily. You open up more and more of the joy, more and more of the peace, more and more of the security that is in your grace. Father, I pray for this revelation for each and every one of us, not just now, but moment by moment, you would continue to give us more and more revelation and you would grow us up in you, I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.